Now, let's go back to Proverbs, the 20th chapter, the 8th and 9th verses for a moment. Let us analyze esoterically the words, A king that sitteth on the throne, a king that sitteth on the throne, is a man a mind who knows his spiritual regnancy. I'm going to say that again and more slowly. A king that sitteth on the throne, a king that sitteth on the throne, is, is a man, a, man, a mind, a mind who, knows who knows his spiritual regnancy. Over materiality. materiality, hard facts, hard facts. And, conditions. and conditions, because this is very important. Many times as we've read the Bible, it has been such an impersonal document, but it is very personal. I'm always telling you that the Bible is a book about you. And the purpose of the Bible is to reveal you to you, to let you know who you are. As a matter of fact, that's why Jesus came, but the theologians got a hold of him. <laughs> and usually when the theologians get a hold of something, they put it in the past or in the future. Or in the sky, they love that. And all that they couldn't get into the past or the future in the sky, they put in hell. Tooth. So the Bible is a book about you, and this verse of Scripture is revealing you to you. It is revealing to you your spiritual regnancy. Say with me, spiritual regnancy. Spiritual regnancy. Say it again. Spiritual regnancy. Say it again. Spiritual regnancy. I'm going to dictate the whole thing again for just a moment, but I want to put some emphasis on that. And let you know of your spiritual regnancy. One who is regnant reigns. And I think most correctly, in royal vocabulary, reigns in the stead of another. This indicates that God reigns in me over my world of circumstances and hard facts. Let me give you that. Have you repeat that and write that too. God reigns in me. God reigns in me. Over my world. Over my world. Of circumstances. Of circumstances. And hard facts. Hard facts. Now this is backward to human thinking, to mortal thinking. People in general believe that they are subject to hard facts, conditions, and circumstances. That's the standard world belief. So much so that it is common to hear people say, under the circumstances. How are you? Well, under the circumstances. See, you started out wrong. You're in the wrong place. What are you doing under there? You have no business under the circumstances. That's how we get into trouble, by being places where we have no business. The scripture begins by telling us where we belong. A king that sits where? On the throne. Does that sound like under the circumstances? Again, where is our correct position? A king that sits on the throne. So get up from under the circumstances and occupy the throne. We'll tell you more about that in a moment. But I want to give you the statement again, the definition of the king here. Repeat it after me again and again and again and again. You see, I have to tell you these things again and again and again because the world constantly tells you negatives again and again and again. All day as the world turns. 
until it shoves you and beats you onto the very edge of night. Until sometimes people become too discouraged to even search for tomorrow. <laughs> and get lost in the secret storm. And end up with all my children in general hospital. <laughs> Under the circumstances. That's because the world is constantly repeating negatives to you. Before a child gets into this world, the world has started in on him or her. Do you know what child hears before the child comes into the world? The moment a woman knows that she is expecting, she should start conditioning the mind of that child at that very moment. Talk about a head start. <laughs> If you wait until you get here, baby, you will not have a head start. Because about the first thing that happens after you get here, you get a slap on the behind. <laughs> and some of you have been crying ever since. So let's find out who we are. Repeat again. A king, a king. Is, is a man, a, man. a mind. Who knows, who knows his spiritual regnancy over materiality, materiality. hard facts, facts and, conditions. and conditions. Now you see that's how you have to face the world. This is the side that you have to turn to the world when you get smitten by the world, that's because you've got the wrong side turned to the world. You see, there is a way to deal with the world. Don't deal with the world as a human. Deal with the world from the vantage point of your spiritual regnancy, your spiritual identity, your spiritual authority, your spiritual self-consciousness. Or else you will be as the old song, I'm a rolling through an unfriendly world. That's because you've got the wrong side turned to the world. Turn the other side. Not so that the world can smack you on that side, but you turn the other side because the world cannot strike you on your spiritual side. You see, and the theologians had us believing that if you got whacked on one side, you were supposed to turn the other side so you could get whacked on that too. First place, if you get whacked on that side, that's a signal to you that you got the wrong side turned to the world. <laughs> Let me say this absolutely again and again and again. Every time you get smitten or struck by the material world, that is the sign that you have got the wrong side turned to the world. It means that you are facing the world in the sense of human self. You see, the flesh can smite the flesh, but the flesh of the world cannot smite the spirit. So to correct your thousands of years of misinformation from theologians, when you turn the other side, you turn from the human, physical, material sense of yourself to the spiritual sense of yourself, to the divine sense of yourself. And you face materiality in your spiritual, divine self-consciousness. And the world cannot smite you on that side. This is how Jesus was able to go through the crucifixion and to arise again. Because he took a hold of his spiritual regnancy and realized that no man can take my life from me. Why? Because my life is spiritual. I've got the spiritual side turned. You guys are down here nailing up the flesh. <laughs> and poking holes in the flesh. 
But I lay down my life voluntarily and I have power to take it up again. So you see, this gives you a handle of how to handle the world. Well, don't feel so bad about it. Perhaps most of us at some point or the other have gotten some smacks in the flesh. Am I the only one? So I repeat to you again, every morning as you groom yourself to go out into the day, fix your face. See, but right now I'm going to work on you to help you fix your face. Say, fix your face. Fix your face. And don't you dare go out there to meet the material world until you first, what? Fix your face. What does that mean? Face the world in the consciousness of your spirituality, your spiritual identity. And if you get smacked by the world in some way or the other, quickly turn. Because, oh my God, I had the wrong side turned. Turn to your spiritual identity. Turn to your self-conscious oneness with God.